so, I made it back to Dublin with Django, and we both felt that it was probably about time to take a bit of a Yatesian adventure. Time to, you know, discover the places that are mentioned in the poems of W.B. Yeats. That's a, a good Irish thing to do, we thought. So where better to come, discover the poetry of W.B. W. B. Yeats, but straight back to the West Coast and here, where I am talking to you from now, County Sligo. So, we booked ourselves into an eco-lodge called the Gyrium. We didn't really know where it was. We didn't really know what it was. Potentially, I mean, it could have been a, a Hari Krishna commune. It could have been, it could have been the compound of a bunch of environmental terrorists. It, to be honest, reading the website, it sounded like it was more likely to be one of those things than to be anything else. All right. Time out after walking halfway through. Halfway through, I swear, halfway through the entire county. God knows where we are. We can't find our hostel. We're gonna have to get a pub. There's a pub just up the road, so. Pub. We'll probably meet us there later. I think any discerning backpacker will know that when you're lost, there is only one course of action, and that course of action is to find the nearest pub, sit down, have a pint, and ask the barman for directions. What was I telling you about the Portuguese? <laughs> We're back walking again after a little intermission at the pub where we met a really interesting local called Connor who strange enough had been to Tasmania and had lived in Melbourne for a while. Small world. But any intelligent person could tell that being slightly drunk in fast fading light, traipsing through the country and thinking it's a real clever idea to start jumping fences as a shortcut is inevitably going to get you far more lost than you were in the first place. Okay, so the next day after a good sleep and a good fire to dry off all our wet clothes, we decided what better way to see Yates's homeland than to go rambling in the hills. Woo! Well, if the road gets too boring for you in Sligo, jump a gate, ford a river, climb a hill. So it is a little strange though. It's County Sligo, and the country areas of County Sligo, however bereft of people they may appear, it always, always feels like there's someone looking at you. No, it's, it's true. The country in County Sligo has this ancient beauty to it. Wherever you go, there's dolmens and cairns. If you look off into the distance, you can see the mountains. And it's really wherever you go, the myth and the legend of the place is all around you. Now, as Django and I were rambling around the hills, at the site of the mythological battle of Moitura, I had the chance to reflect on Yeats and how the landscape inspired him to write what he did write. I don't know. Maybe to some people it was just a hilly field full of standing rocks and cow shit. But I don't I think I can understand that back in the day, if you were someone like Yates who grew up around Sligo and got to see 
what we've just seen and got to experience, I don't know, megalithic grave sites like back there, lake islands, huge desolate mountains and the backdrop of rain and cloud and most definitely the greenest part of the world, then I think there's a chance that you could really find an appreciation and a, a deeper understanding. For yeah, either it was that or the, uh, the abundance of magic mushrooms that were growing everywhere. No points for guessing what that was. So we'd seen some of the area that had inspired Yeats. We'd seen some of the mythological sites of Ireland, learnt some of the legends, kind of immersed ourselves in it all. So what was there to do next? Well, it's obvious, isn't it? Go and meet the man himself. Well, we may be soaking wet, but here we are under Steep Ben Bulgan's head. Drumcliff Church and Cemetery, which is where Yeats's grave is. I can understand why Yates chose to be buried in Drumcliff. It really is a beautiful church next to a beautiful river right underneath the slopes of Ben Bulban which is an amazing, amazing mountain. However, unfortunately today it's spoilt a little. Well, it's spoilt a lot, let's be honest. The N17, a big roadway, cuts right through the town and the people of Sligo have really loved to cash in on the whole Yates draw card. I, I don't know, maybe Yates is rolling in his grave because honestly, after my visit to the churchyard, I was a, a little surprised that they weren't, weren't charging us to see the grave. Hey, I guess if you will do a good thing, roll with it. Hell, I, I couldn't finish a video about Sligo without mentioning the mountains, because you just saw that. On all sides here, these amazing mountains, Knocknaray that way with a huge can on top, the reputed graveside of Queen Maeve, Ben Bulban a little further over, a nestle between all these mountains, Loch Gill over there somewhere, Loch Arrow down there, all filled with lake islands, it's like, it's like forests kind of just floating there on the water. You know, if you're not interested in Yates, if you're not interested in the, the history and the mythology of Ireland, then hell, forget that, still come to Sligo. Just walking around and looking around you, you can see you're in a pretty amazing spot. This place still is a bit of a secret to the rest of the world, and I think that's probably what gives it its charm and its character, is that it's undiscovered. Anyway, now it's time to kick back and enjoy the pagan festival of Halloween.